Well, as some of you know, I'm on a cruise for the next two weeks, or the next week, actually. I've been gone for a week, and the cruise is not exactly turning out the way we planned. Hey everybody, Cruise Man here. You'll notice I'm not wearing my normal Cruise Man's garage garb because right now I am talking to you from Viking Mars. We are in Aalborg, Denmark today. Uh, but I wanted to give you an update. We've been gone for a little more than a week, maybe eight or nine days. And uh, just to let you know, the cruise uh, has been great so far. I look forward to getting back, getting back to work on the motorcycle videos. I have been putting out some videos. I think maybe you've noticed that. But we got a little surprise this morning. Ricky's not been feeling good the last couple of days. Uh, I even had a little headache yesterday when I got up. You know, otherwise I feel pretty good. But uh, turns out we both tested positive for COVID. I've actually already told this story for my other channel. So rather than rehash everything with you, I'm just going to include that video in this video. And it is day eight, I believe, of our Viking Homelands cruise on Viking Mars. And we found out this morning that Ricky and I both have tested positive for COVID-19. So we got the Rona. Now, let me give you the background. Ricky has been feeling bad for a couple of days. Uh, she did get off the ship and go into Berlin, and she seemed to feel pretty good. She was able to walk, and, you know, she had a little bit of a headache and, you know, wasn't feeling great, but she wasn't, you know, bedridden. I, on the other hand, had virtually no symptoms at all, and... Then yesterday when we were in Copenhagen, I felt fine, got up, did my thing. Um, Ricky, however, stayed in the stateroom. In fact, she was off camera in the bed resting while I was making the video yesterday. And I would have to stop every now and then. I edited it out because she would start coughing. She has had a pretty bad cough, a really bad sore throat. Uh, bad headache. I actually got off the ship yesterday. I did a tour in Copenhagen and I tried to get the guide to let me know where or tell me where a pharmacy was in Copenhagen so I could maybe get some cough medicine or some over-the-counter cold meds and um, he wasn't much help unfortunately. Uh, it was a Saturday so I went back into town on my own on the ship's uh, shuttle, their complimentary shuttle, and I was using Apple Maps and Google Maps to try to find a pharmacy. And I only found two, I had to walk like two and a half miles, and I only found two, but they were both closed. So I don't know if they typically close on Saturdays in this part of the world. So I was unable, I came up short. I did go to a grocery store and found some cough lozenges, like Hall's lozenges. And I think that might have helped a little bit with her cough and her sore throat, but not enough. So today the ship is in Aalborg, Denmark, and I was going to get off the ship and start looking for a pharmacy. I started doing some research online, and I can't find any pharmacy that's open on Sunday. So made the decision to go ahead and go down to the medical center, take Ricky down there. I still felt pretty good. I have a, maybe a mild headache and uh, this morning, but, you know, nothing like what Ricky has. And, I mean, she was up all night coughing. You know, you know she doesn't feel good. Uh, so we went to the medical center here on Viking Mars, uh, met with a nurse. And, of course, the first thing they did was took Ricky into an exam room and gave her an antigen test, a rapid antigen test. And it immediately came back positive. And then they came out, they wanted to do the saliva test, the PCR test. The reason I'm going through all of this is because if you're on a cruise, what happens if you're on a cruise and you get COVID, especially if you're on a Viking cruise? So this might be good information for some of those of you who are planning to travel and just give you a little knowledge of what the 
the process is because I really wasn't aware of what the process was. We, you know, we thought maybe they're going to throw us off the ship. We didn't know. They gave me the little vial to spit into to do the PCR test, and they gave Ricky the PCR test as well because it's just a second, you know, way to make sure. It's like a backup, and it's a more accurate test anyway. So um, I gave them my, my PCR test, and Ricky gave them her PCR test, and they told me that we would have, or they told us that we would have our results back by 4 o'clock today. It's now about 1 o'clock, and I think about maybe 45 minutes ago, I got a call from the nurse saying that we did both tests positive and from the PCR tests. Now, we were told at the medical center after we had our tests that we needed to go back to our stateroom and stay in the stateroom, uh, basically a quarantine, until those test results came back. And if I tested negative and was asymptomatic, I could continue to go on around the ship and, you know, like normal. But that if I tested positive, like Ricky, that I'm basically quarantined, and the quarantine lasts for five nights. Now, we're only on, I think, for six more nights. So pretty much the remainder of the cruise uh, were, were locked down uh, in, in, the, in our stateroom. Now, let me tell you a little about the experience at the medical center. I think the nurse, she was a little hard to understand. There was a little bit of a, a language barrier. Obviously, English was not her first language, but she was very polite, very thorough, uh, seemed to know what she was talking about. We did not see the doctor. I think he stepped into the room where Ricky was briefly, but he went and got the meds. And they did give us some medication. Uh, so I'll show you what they gave us. Uh, the first thing are some uh, daytime cold capsules. These look like over-the-counter products to me. I'm sure they are. Uh, it's called Day Nurse. I'm sure it's a European version of what you would probably get in the U.S. And this is for to take during the day. And it basically is for tickly cough, shivers, aches and pains, blocked or runny nose. So it's probably got some sort of a antihistamines and, and uh, decongestants, I'm assuming, uh, sore throat pain and headache. So I'm sure it has acetaminophen or something in it. And then at night, they gave us a package of these pills called Panadol. I'm not familiar with that name either. And it's basically paracetamol and dif diphenhydramine nighttime pain relief, probably designed to help you sleep a little better. And so they gave us those, and they told me that I could take these as well. You may notice I'm also a little hoarse today. Uh, I am now starting to get just a very mild uh, cough, not, not nearly as bad as what Ricky has, but I do have a slight uh, cough. It's not unusual for me to be congested anyway, so that's pretty normal. They also gave us uh, some cough expectorant, uh, like a cough syrup called Careway, and uh, basically to loosen any uh, congestion in your chest and soothe, you know, a, a cough. And so basically that we can take as well. So those are the three medications they gave us. They did, uh, when he called, or I think it was a, a male nurse, uh, when he called, he told me that if we need more medication, they'll be glad to deliver it to the stateroom. I'm waiting to receive a letter. He said we'd be getting a letter that has all the phone numbers and extensions that we need to, if we need to contact room service or beverage services, housekeeping, whatever, you know, they obviously they've done this before. And if we needed any more medications to let them know, they'd bring them to us. There's no charge for these medications. Uh, I don't know if there was a charge for that office visit this morning. I suspect probably not, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'll let you know in a future video. Now, I didn't really feel that good when I started to make this video. So before I did the video, I took a Tylenol. Uh, I've been able to get by okay with just like one Tylenol. I don't even think I've taken one today, so that's my first one today. So my symptoms right now are much, much milder than Ricky's. We are pretty much 
locked down for the next five days. Uh, my understanding is that, you know, room service will find out. When I get the letter, I'll find out what our options are as far as food. We did have breakfast delivered today. Uh, they do a very good job with room service from what we've experienced. We've only had breakfast delivered. <clears throat> I may uh, I may actually order some lunch here in a little bit, maybe get a burger or something delivered. I'm not sure what my options are. So that's uh, our COVID story right now. I wouldn't say that either one, either one of us are deathly ill. I've been fully vaccinated. I have not been boosted. Ricky has been fully vaccinated and has had the one booster. But my understanding is that this new variant that's now circulating the globe uh, is immune to those vaccines anyway. So I don't know if the vaccines had any impact at all on this new variant. My understanding is from what I've been seeing on TV and on the internet is it's, it's not impacted by the vaccine. In fact, they don't even have a current vaccine for it yet. I, I know I know what some people are going to ask is, you know, who do we blame? Who's who's at fault here? And there, there, I may have even mentioned this in a previous video. There's not a lot of social distancing going on right now. This ship has about 780 people on board, and we were on one tour where there were 50 people on the bus. The bus was completely full. And we've been on buses where, in fact, every, every coach we've been on so far, somebody, at least one, two, or three people have been coughing. That just is going to happen. And that's going to happen anytime. But in, in the day and time we live in now, you, you, you tend to pay more attention to it. Who do you blame? I don't blame Viking. I don't uh, hold them responsible. It's a virus. Uh, if I blame anybody, I blame China. You know, they're the ones that, created and released this thing so uh, or let it get out however it got out so uh, I, I, I don't you know I'm not laying any blame at the feet of any cruise line this is just it's just the world we live in right now now what I would suggest if you're planning on cruising right now since this BA 2.75 variant is apparently very very contagious I would think twice about traveling internationally. Um, Viking has said nothing about making us get off the ship and stay in a hotel or anything like that. Now, I don't know what happens when we get to Norway at the end of the cruise. You're just going to have to watch the next videos to see what, what how that ends up. But my understanding from what I've been told so far is, you can hear Ricky over there coughing right now. <coughs> and me. My, and I'm sorry to put that on video, but I think it might be important for you to see it. I don't know. Who cares? But my understanding is we will not be tested again. And if at the end of the five nights, if neither one of us is symptomatic, then we're free to do whatever we want to do at that point. So we'll just have to see how that goes and, and how this all plays out. Like I say, this is new territory. We've never done this before. And, but I think it's important information for those of you that are planning a cruise. The other thing I would recommend is if you're immunocompromised at all, uh, and I would include in that just anybody that's really seriously obese, uh, because that is a big uh, factor apparently. I would avoid going on coach excursions, any kind of a shore excursion where you have to get on a motor coach. Now we've done some excursions on this trip where you just get off the ship and it's a walking tour. And you can keep your distance from people on a walking tour because you're outside. You've got a big sidewalk and you've got the quiet box so you can hear up to 100 yards away if you need to. And that's the way my tour was yesterday in Copenhagen. And I just instinctively stay away from the group anyway. I always have. I've always, social distancing was nothing new to me. I, 
I'm not big on crowds anyway. I don't like crowds of people. I always try to get away from everybody. It's, you know, when we go to a restaurant, we always sit way off in the corner by ourselves. We've been doing that for years. We don't like being around the crowds because we don't like the noise anyway. Some people do. Some people are very social and they want to get right up next to everybody and love hugs and kisses and all that. And we're just not that, we're just not that kind of people. Um, I would say... As far as I can tell, Vikings, this is pretty impressive the way they're handling this. Uh, their medical team apparently is very well aware of what they're doing. They, they had the medications ready. They're aware of the situation. They've already canceled all of our shore excursions for the next five days. We did not have any shore excursions that we had paid for. The, we've all, the, the paid shore excursions we've already done. The only shore excursions we have remaining are included. They're free anyway, so there was no no problem there. But she did say that any shore excursions would automatically be canceled and we would be refunded the money. So I thought that was nice. I We do have travel insurance, just to let you know. So I don't know if there's going to be any additional costs involved. Uh, we did pay for the Silver Spirits package, which is the drink package. And I don't care how sick I am, I'm having my, you know, crown royal every night. But I don't know if I can. I don't know if they'll deliver liquor to the stateroom through room service. We're going to find out. That'll be one of the first things I find out after 5 o'clock tonight, my happy hour. So we'll see if they uh, do that or not. I'm anxious to get this letter and read through it. In my next video, I will read that letter to you so you know all the protocols, all what, what they're doing. But it appears right now, they've been in touch with us. They've called a couple of different times. Uh, you know, they're aware of the situation. They're handling it. Our room steward knows the situation. He came in today and took care of cleaning up the room, did a great job. Uh, you know, everybody that we've been in touch with since this happened has been very nice, very polite. And it appears like, you know, we're just trying to make the best of a bad situation. Uh, we could be in worse places. I'd much rather be in a nice balcony stateroom on Viking Ocean cruises than in a inside stateroom or an ocean view stateroom on a lot of ships. We've got a big screen television. We've got internet. I've got Wi-Fi. I can do my videos. I can upload my videos. I'll get a lot of work done. And uh, we've got the meds. And I think... Uh, Hopefully, Ricky will be feeling better by tomorrow, and we'll just have to wait and see. But I will update you on that. We'll probably do another video tomorrow. So that's our story right now. Uh, like I said, it's a virus. It happens. This is the world we live in right now, and you can't run from it. You're probably going to get it. If you, In fact, I would say this. If you go on a cruise or if you travel at all right now, you get on an airplane full of people, or you get out in any kind of crowds full of people, you're probably going to get COVID at some point. You just need to accept it. It's just something that's going to happen. And fortunately, this new strain, this BA275, and I'm sure hopefully the ones that come after it, are not as uh, deadly or as serious or as severe as the early strains like the Delta and the Beta and the Alpha and all that. So that's good news. Um, right now, I would say it feels like we have a cold. Okay. So uh, Ricky's, like I said, a little bit more serious, much more serious than I am, but she's surviving. She can eat. She can get up and walk around. She's not to the point where she's completely bedridden. So she can breathe. We, neither one of us have any shortness of breath. Uh, the lungs appear to be okay. So I think that's the, that's the biggest concern with any kind of flu or any kind of virus like this is pneumonia. Because that's what kills you. COVID doesn't kill you. It's the pneumonia that kills you. Uh, so and you can get that with just a regular flu. But so anyway, enough of my ranting about medical things I know nothing about. Uh, that's it. So we are just wanted to update you, let you know what's going on. If you like the video, click the like button and I will see you soon once I'm back in Cruise Man's garage. Oh, and you'll notice the cap is different. This is my cruisereport.com cap. I'm not sure if you can see that. 
since I'm actually here covering this ship for my other website, which I'm doing much more extensive videos on this topic. Uh, so if you're interested in cruising, maybe check out cruiserport.com. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Make sure to ride safe.